Hey everyone, it's Carly Hall and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to teach you how to engrave on a pre-cut surface. So I'm using this small bamboo cutting board and we're going to engrave a design on it. This tutorial will be great for engraving on really any type of pre-cut surface that needs to be lined up precisely. So a cutting board, ornaments, maybe just a blank that you found and you want to personalize it, this tutorial is for you. So we are going to get started over on my computer, working with the design and setting it up for the app. For this tutorial, I will be showing you my steps in Adobe Illustrator, but you can use whatever design software you're comfortable using. And we are going to design a jig. So the whole point of this tutorial is to create a jig or an item that will act as kind of a guide to place our cutting board. So I have my design here, but to tell the Glowforge that I want to cut out a jig, we are going to draw a rectangle that is similar to the size of our cutting board. Well, slightly bigger than our cutting board. So I'm going to click on the rectangle tool. And if I click on anywhere on my artboard, I can type in the dimensions. So my width is 8.75 and my height is six, and then I'll click okay. In the Glowforge app, if you have a filled item like this, it will automatically see that as an item that you want to engrave. You can change that once you are in the app, but to make it easier, we are going to swap it so that it's just a stroke, and then the Glowforge will see that we want to cut that item and not engrave it. If you wanna change the color, I like to set my cut files as red so that it's just a visual reminder that that is my cut. So for this rectangle, we know it's a little bit larger than our cutting board. So we want our design to fill the area, but not go all the way to the edges. So I'm going to grab my design and then while holding the shift key, I'm going to resize it to fit within our cutting board. So this one is coming out a little too far and right here it's coming out a little too far because again, our jig is just slightly bigger than our image. So I want to like give myself a little bit of wiggle room on the sides so that I'm not worried it's going to get chopped off. We'll center this all up. For this file, if you want to change it or you want to add love the Hall family or whatever you'd like, at this point, this would be the time that you want to edit your file. Okay, I'm not going to fuss too much since that's not the point of this tutorial. So now I have my black layer that is filled. So Glowforge will see that as an engrave. And then I have my cut outline. So it looks really good. I'm going to highlight both of them together and then just center it up onto my artboard so that everything is nice and centered. Okay, that looks good to me. We're going to come up to the top and click Save As. We can call it whatever we want and we are going to set the format to SVG, and I'm just going to save it on my desktop. These settings are fine. Here we are. You're looking on the top of my Glowforge. I'm going to open up the lid, and inside the bed of the laser, I'm going to place my cardboard. Now, if you're planning on cutting a whole bunch of these projects, I would recommend that you line up your jig with the bottom of your crumb tray. So my cardboard is not perfectly square. Let's see if this side's better. This side's a little bit better. So I'm pushing the edge of the material into this bottom left-hand corner. And then that way, if I want to reopen this file down the road, I know exactly where to place my jig. So I'm going to pin that down. These are some hold down pins, you can find the file. I'll add it to the video description. It's in the free files on Glowforge. So now you can see that my material will not shift. And then I'll close the lid and power on the machine. So everything's scanned and now I'm ready to go. I'm going to set the focus before I do anything else. So in at the top, there's these three dots. Click on that and then click set focus. And in the middle of your cardboard, click on that to have your Glowforge set the focus on your material. Now that we've set our focus, we're going to change our material to be cardboard. So we can just search cardboard and you have two options and I'm going to choose 530 seconds and select that. 
Now let's bring in our artwork. So up at the top, we're going to click import artwork and upload. Find wherever you saved your project and then click open. When it finally loads, you can see that it came in how we want it with the black engraved and the outer rectangle is red and is turned on to cut. So now I'm going to drag this over and you can see that there's grayed margins and we cannot go into those. So once you drag into those, you're out of bounds. So we will be able to go up to as far over here and then you can see down at the bottom where we can put our project. Say you're selling these and you want two of them on your page, you can adjust this so that you can fit more than one. I would just make sure that you have enough room between them because, I mean, you could just put them right next to each other and butt them up against the left and the right, but I like to see all of my outline so I can center it. So for my project, I'm just going to do one, but if you had ornaments or something like that, you can absolutely do more than one item and jig at the same time. So just calling that out, but I'm just going to do one. Since I'm only cutting out one, I can really put this rectangle wherever I want. So if I want it smack dab in the middle, I can absolutely do that. If I want it over to the side, it doesn't matter. I always tend to put my projects on the side because usually I'm cutting multiple jigs and want to fill up the space. But for this project, I could actually cut it over here and then just cut down my jig and save it so that I just know how to line it up in the bottom left-hand corner. So we'll just put it right here so that you can see that you can, in fact, put it off to the side and it will still be lined up perfectly. So now that we have our material set, our design is uploaded, we're ready to cut our jig. Before we cut our jig, we want to turn off this engrave. We do not want to engrave our cardboard. So we're going to click ignore. And now this layer is ignored and we are just going to cut the outline of our rectangle. So we'll click print and this print will only take 15 seconds. So it's pretty quick. So over on the Glowforge side, I'm just going to click the magic button and get started. So it says our print is done, so let's grab that. I have a Cricut weeding tool and I'm just going to stab my cardboard so I can just lift it out, just like that. And then while I'm in here, I'm just going to draw an arrow so that I know that this is where I want to put my jig next time. So here's our board and we're just going to drop it into the jig and you can see that it fits pretty well. And I'm just going to line it up centered to that box. Okay, so I centered it up and you can see that there is a little bit of wiggle room. If you want it to be tighter, you can do exact dimensions and get it super tight, but this works great for this project. So I'm not going to fuss too much. And you can see that the pins are holding that material down so I can place my material right in the box. Now we're going to close the lid. Back in the software, I'm going to set the focus again. This is optional, but I like to do it when I'm doing these longer engraves. So I'm going to set the focus on the middle of my cutting board. All right, so here's the scary part. So it looks like this is now completely off. Whatever you do, do not move your design within the software. So we want to keep everything exactly where it is. But you can see that the further out you go to the left or the right of your camera, the more it warps it and the fisheye bulge really affects where the placement goes. Because if I was placing my design, I would move this over to the right since you can see that this dot is hanging off the left edge. But when we're done, I will show you where that dot ends up. So again, don't move anything. We are now just going to reverse these things. So I'm going to engrave this and we are going to engrave it on my bamboo cutting board setting. And that setting looks like this. So I have the speed at 950, power at 95, lines per inch 225. These are just settings that work for me. If you found settings that work better, you can absolutely do whatever settings you'd like, but for my projects, they've worked great. And then we are going to turn off the cut. So now I'm on the cut layer and I'm going to click ignore. So we are not cutting that outer box. We are just engraving it. Since I created my own cut settings, my own engrave settings, I don't have to worry about changing this, but if you want to do something and change your settings um, to like medium basswood plywood or something like that, you can change them. But again, since I already have my engraved settings set up and I've set the focus, we can actually leave this to be corrugated cardboard and it won't affect anything. 
Now this is a longer engrave, so I'm going to click print and it will tell us how long it will take. So it will take 28 minutes and 20 seconds. Now, if you want to speed that up, you can adjust your engrave settings to be less lines per inch or faster speed, and it will adjust your time. These settings work great for me, and I usually will just sit next to my Glowforge while I'm editing or doing another project and have a camera on my Glowforge so I can see it the whole time and babysit my laser and get some other work done. So these work great for me, but if you are looking to speed it up, you can adjust the settings to be faster or less lines per inch. Okay, so we are going to go over to Glowforge and get started. All right, so our print is done and we can pull it out of the laser. So you can see here that that dot that looked like it was going to hang off, it's perfectly aligned. So I will take this over and show you a closer look. We'll clean it up. But now I have my board done and I'm ready to pop the next one in. And then I can just line that up and start the next one without changing any settings. If I needed to cut something else, I could pop this jig out and you can see that I can move it around. And then when I'm ready to cut more boards, I just would line up that arrow in the corner along the edge and make sure that it's placed right where I had it, pin it back down and I'm good to go. So I can reuse this jig or you can simply cut a new one every time you're working on mass producing an item. So jigs are really helpful. Here is a look at the final engrave. You can see that I chose not to mask my product. So I have a baby wipe and then I just kind of wipe off the char. And you can see on the baby wipe that that burnt char will come off onto the wipe. So you'll just wipe across. This will air dry and it will look great. I do wanna mention that when you're engraving these bamboo boards, there is some variation in the color that it will engrave. So you can see that the lighter woods up here will engrave a little lighter. Down here, there's a darker strip, so you'll get some darker engraves, which is totally normal for these boards. And you can adjust the settings to engrave as light or as dark as you like. So as this is drying, I wanted to talk about the edge of the design. And you can see that it, in fact, is on the board, which is why you have to trust your jig and not move anything. It's so important to keep everything exactly where it was, even if it looks like it's going to be off. So you can see here on the screen, this is what it looked like before we cut it. And if you were anything like me when I first started, I would have wanted to shift that over to the right, but it would have affected our design and our design would have been off. So trust the jig and do not move your design and you will end up with a perfectly centered image. So the cutting board is almost dry and you can see that there's no more char. So when I rub my fingers on it, there's no char coming off. So that's why I don't spend the time masking and then picking off the mask because I can easily wipe it down with the baby wipe and get the same look. So this project is relatively easy to do. It is a lot of laser time, but in terms of the setup and then repetition, if you're doing this a lot and you're just placing board after board, the jig really does help. So Hopefully you learned a new skill or two during this YouTube class because I know that jigs really have helped me in the past with ornaments or round shaped items, especially off to the edge of the laser bed where it looks like it's going to be lined up and then you go to cut it and it's off and you're wasting all of these blanks, which is just costing money. So hopefully you picked up something new. If you wanna see other Glowforge tutorials, let me know what you'd like to learn. And since you made it to the end of the video, head over to my website. You can get this file free for personal use with the link at the very, very bottom. I'm not going to even say what it is. I'm just going to put it as a blog post. And since you watched, you can pick up this file for free for personal use. And then if you're looking to sell it to your customers, I do have a commercial license on Etsy. All right. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like it and consider subscribing to my channel for more tutorials like this, where I teach you skills in Adobe for Cricut use, Glowforge use, all of the things.
Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.